the one who praises the Awa Basham Yahushai Basham Harakak with us the bonus <coughs> unto your apostle unto the apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well and shalom to the whole four elect. Okay, um this is um Prophecy and News back at you again. Uh there's been a lot of recent events taking place in the news. Alright. Um, the main one that comes to mind is the fact that they're what I'm going to delve into in this article but you've had it's been like a snowball effect of basically um, you know if if you really pay attention to the news you can see it's coming from a mile off okay because they basically had a they would, you know they started out with the local lockdowns looking down different cities towns and what not going back into a two week lockdown and they tried that out on towns and cities they tried that out on towns and cities outside you know small towns small cities not well known and then they took a big big step I'd say probably like a week ago or so it may not even be a week ago but I know they took a big step with locking down the whole of the North East of the UK then they followed up by locking down I can't remember the specifics of the time schedule or the timeline sorry but basically now you've got to the, and then they went to the Midlands um, the West Country different parts of, of the UK basically and now they finally arrived at, at the you know London the city you know of the UK so and them arriving at that it kind of lets you know where we're at. So that being said, I want to get into this article. So, you know, Lord willing, you'll be edified, okay? So this is COVID, pubs and restaurants in England to have 10 p.m. closing times. All pubs, bars, restaurants and other hospitality venues in England must have a 10 o'clock closing time, all right? from Thursday to help curb the spread of coronavirus. And that's the other thing they've been saying. They've been saying that the transmission rate has been increasing and now everyone's getting... And if... <laughs> this is this is where it is. Everyone... Man, people are simple, man. But, it, I mean, I'm... Uh, it's, it's all good because it's, it's only going to work in favour towards our salvation. But I can't lie. You know, you see it. You just think, you people are they, they're that slow. But basically, um, and they are. But um, basically, like this is the boogeyman of all boogeymans. Basically, there's you know the symptoms are not very clear. Um, testing isn't very clear. Everything is isn't too clear. There's not too much clarity. Everything is um, a shot in the dark, basically. And it gives the pub. It's the pub. It has it gives the government all the leverage to do as they please with this so-called pandemic or plandemic okay so and this is what they're doing they you they're leveraging this situation to do as they please and and mind you the fact that they're closing hospitality venues is just the beginning all right and people are so fearful that they're willing to throw away all their rights and adhere to whatever they say and they don't realize what they're falling for the banana in the in the, in the pipe basically so um yeah, I'm going to read on. So it says, um, the sector will also be restricted by law to table service only. So it's going to be, by law, it's going to be restricted to table service only. So you ain't allowed to come out of your seat. Everything has to be, you have to be waited upon. All right. The measures will be set out by the Prime Minister in Parliament before an address to the nation to be broadcast live at 8 BST on Tuesday. It comes as the UK's COVID-19 alert level moved to 4, meaning transmission is high and rising exponentially. Right, and the fifth is basically the hospitals being overwhelmed. So that gives you an idea of where we're going to, right? Because it's September. We had the last day of summer on Monday. Today, even, it was like 26 degrees or odd. But it's that spring, fall kind of sun where the heat isn't, you know, like 
boxed in the heat. So all I, what I'm really saying is that, you know, the temper change is coming and a lot of sick people are going to have, you know, symptoms of um, the flu, cough, you know, dry cough, all these different things. So that transmission rate rising is going to definitely fall, you know, go back to what we knew it was back in March, okay, with loads of people in the hospital. Boris Johnson is also expected to stress the need for people to follow social distancing guidelines where face coverings are washed their hands regularly. And they're increasing the, um, the what's the word, um, the ser- you know, they're being more serious about having the face coverings and all that kind of stuff right now. All right, you go into certain shops, they may have gave you leeway pr- before, they're not giving you no leeway now, all right? Where it's like now everyone has to wear a mask to be served, okay? And that was, and they said that months ago, but it's only now in September that they're saying they're going to do it. It comes as the UK's COVID-19 alert, uh, sorry, um, and according to the newspaper reports, he will urge the people to work from home where it does not negatively impact businesses. So we're going from everyone go out there and work and get money. Now it's going back to what they said before. Everyone go back home and don't work. You know, we don't want you guys to the office, offices again. How does the COVID, sorry, the government's chief scientific advisor, Sir Patrick Valance, Valance, has warned there could be 50,000 new corona cases a day by mid-October without further action, which he said could lead to more than 200 deaths per day by mid-November, okay? On Monday, a further 4,368 daily cases and 11 deaths were reported in the UK. There were 3,899 cases reported on Sunday, Further restrictions will also be announced in Scotland on Tuesday, while restrictions on the households mixing indoors will be extended to all of Northern Ireland. Also, from um, 6 o'clock on Tuesday, four more country counties in South Wales will face new measures, including a 11 o'clock curfew for pubs and bars. All right. The UK Cabinet will meet on Tuesday morning and Boris Johnson will also chair a COBRA meeting, um, a COBRA emergency meeting, which will be attended by leaders of Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Speaking about the new closing times, a number 10 spokesman person um, said, no one underestimates the challenges of the new measures, the new measures will possess to many individuals and businesses. We know this won't be easy, but we must take further action and control the resurgence of cases of the virus and protect the NHS. Tight restrictions on the pub and restaurant opening times are already in place in parts of North East and North West England and Wales. All right. I'm not going to delve into this whole article. But the point is that um, these um, restrictions may read over, glance over a, a bit of this. Okay, so this is what difference will it make? People are understandably asking what the difference closing at 10 makes. Coupled with the table service law, it will be little more than a marginal gain. But what ministers hope is that the move along with the rule of six that came into force last week will add as a warning to the public that efforts to curb the virus need to be redoubled. Right? That remains to be seen as to whether all the restrictions will accompany this move. Behind the scenes, both ministers and advisors have argued over what the right thing to do and how much the public will be willing to tolerate. It seems inevitable that the virus will continue to spread. That's what respiratory viruses do, do during winter, especially one that is limited immunity and no vaccine. Aha, the vaccine. Uh, how could I even forget that? <laughs> the vaccine, all right? So conveniently enough, we're seeing that the, um, 
the the rate of um infections increasing and they're saying by mid October it could see fifty thousand people being affected daily and then it could have two hundred people dying daily and then entering the vaccine that no one tests I mean no one um no one um um trusts and you know we're gonna have an interest interesting um winter time. Okay, this winter is gonna be an interesting one. And law willing, the law preserve us through it, man. Because ultimately, hey, this is it. Okay, this is a the this is basically they've been naming it um, the, what do they call it, man? The, the transition of power, something to that effect. So basically, this is Esau looking to establish his power. Right, and what you're seeing taking place before your eyes is is gradualism, right? This is Esau's main tactic of gradualism. Now, if you look at this, this is a lockdown timeline, and it was an easing lockdown in England going back to July. So I say, first July twenty fourth said face coverings compulsory in shops and supermarkets, indoor gyms, swimming pools, and sports facilities can reopen. Then it says close contact. Beauty services, casinos, bowling alleys, all these different things, all school, schools and nursery. In October, all that's meant to happen, audiences may be able to return to sports stadiums. And then by November, they said social distancing measures may be eased. But guess what? That's not what's happened. We're going back into um, um, a lockdown again, right, essentially. But guess what? It's going to be more severe this time around. Okay, so let's delve into some scriptures, and this is this is basically what's taking part place before our eyes, and this is all prophecy in the Bible. Remember the testimony of Yahweh Shai, the spirit of prophecy. So the key thing that we need to understand is this is prof this is prophetic things taking place before our eyes. So this is um Daniel's eight and twenty three, and in the latter time of their kingdom, and this is dealing with Esau Edom because it says. When you read up, it talks about the ram being the, the king of the Grecians, which is the start of Esau's kingdom, the Greco Roman Empire. But then you have um, the chain that was bound around the that old serpent, the beast, and that it would be taken off of him, they may be loose for a little season. And that's a loose little season which is being spoken of here, which is the latter time of the kingdom. So this is Daniel's 8 and 23 and it reads, And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, right, and that's why we, we're at Joel 9, 24, this earth has never been this wicked ever in, t in time, and it's, uh, it's, it's worse, basically. A king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, okay? He is wise for thou, wiser than Daniel, talking about Esau, okay? And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, right? And he shall destroy wonderfully, not by his own power, because it's governed by multiple different kingdoms. But America is the is the harlot that sitteth upon the beast, okay? And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and holy people. And that's, A, hey, he's been kicking our ass for the, for the last 500 years, man hard bondage slavery um and and here we are now man so-called free but getting the, getting a raw deal basically getting the, the worst end of the stick and he shouted um verse 25 and that's the point and through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand hey what does it tell you in um isaiah the 10th chapter that um woe to woe to him that um, cause if the wicked cause the righteous let me quickly read it actually because I don't want to butcher it it's Isaiah 10 and 1 says woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed okay that being Esau Edom the so called white man as is known today basically the laws the statutes that he passed this basically creates grievousness. I mean, creates grievousness onto the people to turn aside the needy from judgment to take away the right from the poor of my people, 
that the widows be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. And that's the reason. All right, to basically have one up and the privacy of all of our, our sovereign rights. All right. So um, let's go back to Daniel 8. Let's read his point and I'll grab a few policy, um, policy scriptures there. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. Okay. So policies that he establishes cause his craft to, pro to prosper basically. And shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. And he shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Okay. So that's only going to be his his end okay but the main point is that he magnifies himself in his heart he's proud basically and by peace shall destroy many and that's basically what's happening right a lot of these a lot of israel mainly is being deceived through the ideal of peace okay that's what's always being offered on the table but it's never it seem even though it's on the table in front of you it's never something that you can actually reach out and attain you know and that's by design okay because he he has an agenda for you in order for you to gain that what you believe is your peace that you desire he basically has law statutes and commandments put in place policies put in place basically to deprive you of that right okay and that's done by design because remember it tells you in the book of first maccabees the eighth chapter how basically the Romans were when they were coming up, and the Maccabees had heard of them, that they they basically beat the Thessalonic, uh, Thessalonia, Thessalonica, um, and basically through patience and policy, established themselves as 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 um, a major power on the the uh, the global um, stage on on the world stage basically, all right, and that was a key power they use the key attribute that they use was basically through patience and policy okay and then basically using the sword when it was uh, time to be done all right sort of like the economical hitman if you look that up you'll find out what's talk, what i'm talking about but i'm going to end on this scripture and hopefully be edified man this is um psalms 55 and 21 the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but words was in his heart, but war was in his heart. Okay, and it's talking about going back into um Esau Edom when he made his his hey, any time he made his way into any form of, of rulership to take it down, he came with peaceable words, okay, with kind words. And they were very smooth and they, you know, subtle and made you put your guard down. But it said, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn um, swords. And that's basically the point he needs to take from this. Because these policies dealing with this, people thinking that social distancing, all this, um, you know, the pub is being closed. No, this is a psyop. Okay, we're we're presently in a psychological, psychological, we're presently in a psychological operation, all right, a psyop, to basically get one over the minds of the people as to where they let their guard down. And why do they want them to let their guard down? Because this is part of the image of the beast. All of this is part of the image of the beast. Now, if you know what the image of the beast is, the image is basically the policies, okay, the followings of the law. But then what's the actual mark of the beast? What's the your stamp of approval, your certification that you, you basically pass the test? It's the RFID chip. Because remember, that's the elect on the left-hand side of the Heavenly Father. Okay? So you have to understand that by you taking the RFID chip in your, anywhere in your body being the mark of the beast, you're basically saying that you're one with the devil, basically. So that's why all these things you're seeing happening before you, it's just prepping you for the time of the end. And we're heading there. There's no way that this ain't going to go any other direction. All right? So the R.